Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Kay. Now I fully intended on doing this video out there in my little setup, but honestly I'm comfortable right now, I'm about to go to bed. But I really wanted to make this video for you guys. I did a video in the past called How to Survive Your Patient Care Tech Job. This is kind of like another one of those videos. You know, I did that one laying in my bed. I was super comfortable. <laughs> So I was like, you know what, let me just not break that tradition. Um, this series is going to be called Tech Talk. It's going to be a two-part series. And I will post this one this week and then part two next week. So I'm just going to give you guys some advice on how to deal with your job as a tech. Okay, so make sure that you stay tuned. Alright you guys, so make sure that you focus on the message and not the mess, okay? <laughs> um, but first things first, when you do any job, like it doesn't matter if you're the janitor or the person that works at a fast food joint, you know, if you work at McDonald's, you work as a tech, no matter what you do, you always want to do your best, okay? And sometimes you're not going to be recognized for everything that you do. You know, there are some people that are recognized and they really don't do a good job. Some people get the recognition they deserve and then some people, they don't. But that should not stop you from doing your job because I guarantee you, like, your patients see what you do and they appreciate it. And that's really the, the biggest thing. Like, if you're into... Um, being a patient care tech for the patient care, your patients will appreciate it when you do a good job. So it's not always about the recognition. You know, it's not about people seeing the good things you're doing all the time. You know, you just want to always do your best. I don't care if you don't like the job. You know, if you're getting paid to be there, you need to do the job. And that's that's just what it is. That's only fair. Okay, so if you don't like the job, just go quit and do something else. But if you're getting paid to do something, just do the very best you can because at the end of the day, if you can't handle this job as a tech, how are you going to handle a job as a nurse or a PA or a doctor? You won't be able to handle that if you can't handle, you know, the pressures of being a tech. You know, it's only going to get worse the higher up you go. You're going to have even more pressure on you. So make sure that you're just doing the very best job that you can, you know, regardless of whether you like your job, like your coworkers, um, just do the work. All right, so my next piece of advice is to focus on the job and never get too comfortable. All right, so you know usually when people are at a job for five, ten years, they start getting comfortable, they think they could do anything. But, I mean, you could be there for 50 years and something goes wrong and you're not meeting the needs of that company and they could just fire you. You know, if you clock in and out of a job, you can get fired at any time. I never get comfortable at any job. No matter how long I've been there, I never get comfortable. If I know I'm doing something wrong, like, you know, if I know I'm showing up late or I'm doing certain things, I'm like, oh, shoot, you know, these people can fire me at any time. So I'm not ever, like, comfortable with anything that I'm doing. Like, you know, I always remember that, you know, if I'm clocking in, you know, I'm getting a paycheck, it's business, you know, it's like a, a business transaction. I'm going there, I'm doing the job, I'm taking care of the patients in exchange for a paycheck. Now, if that paycheck stops, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> and if you stop doing what you're supposed to do, you won't be there either. Like, people get fired after years and years of being at a job because they get way too comfortable. You know, I really feel like, you know, you should focus on work. I feel like when you get too comfortable at a job, you kind of put people in a position to fire you. You know, like, when if you were that great worker in the beginning, you always did your job, and now you're slacking because you've been there for so long, you feel like you could just get away with it, you're going to put 
people in a position to say, okay, they're not doing the job anymore. They're just not cutting it anymore. And you don't want to do that, you know? So just make sure that you realize that this is work. You're not at home. You're not with your family, you know? And there's nothing wrong with having a bond with your coworkers, but you're still not at home. You know, this is an exchange for your time, for money. That's really what it is, you know. Um, so just never, ever get comfortable at work and just focus on the job. All right, so the next thing that you want to keep in mind, you know, we talked about how when you're at work, you do the very best you can. When you're there, you also focus on the job. You just, you know, get it done. This is business, not personal. And third, when you leave work, you want to leave work at work. So all the drama, all the negativity, you know, that patient that died, whatever happened at work, you want to leave it there. Because when you start crossing over your personal and your, your work life, that can get very, very stressful. Okay, a lot of people, like a lot of healthcare workers, they burn out because some people just don't know how to separate the two. You know, when you're when you walk out of those doors, forget that you had an argument with this person and forget that this person pissed you off or um, whatever happened. Just leave it inside the hospital. OK, so whatever happened, you'll deal with it when you get back. But when you can't separate the two, you're going to end up being very, very stressed out. You're going to be like talking about work all the time when you're home. And that's not healthy. You know, when you're home, you're supposed to be focused on yourself. You know, go to the spa, you know, go to the beach, do something fun. Like you don't want to be fo focused on work all the time because then you're going to start burning out. And that's really like a big issue in healthcare because people just don't know how to turn that off. You know, you have to learn how to do that. So the next thing that I wanna talk about is accountability. You can only 100% trust yourself. You know, accountability is a very big deal in healthcare. You can't simply point fingers at other people and say, well, she told me to do this or he told me to do this. This is not elementary school, okay? <laughs> um, so you always gotta make sure that you're being accountable for yourself. That means that you're not gonna allow someone to chart under your name. You know, let's say, you were supposed to put 10 milliliters, like the patient had 10 milliliters of water or something, I don't know. And they're on some kind of fluid restriction. And then someone chart, charted that the patient had a thousand milliliters of water. That's a big difference, right? But if you chart it, you know what you put, but if you're telling someone else, oh, go chart this on my computer or whatever it is, um, I mean, you're really just setting yourself up because later on you're going to have to explain it and you can't simply say, oh, well, that person charted it. It wasn't me. Well, I mean, it's under your name. So you can't really blame someone else for, for certain things, you know. And you, you also don't have to do things you're not comfortable doing. You know, if, if something is not within your scope of practice, don't do it <laughs> because you're going to be held accountable at the end of the day. Like if... Uh, IV machine is going off and you're not comfortable pressing restart if, if a nurse says okay well just go press restart and you're not comfortable doing that you know it is a common thing for a tech to just press restart but if you're not comfortable doing that then just don't do it because let's say something happened to the patient while you're pressing that restart button or you accidentally press something else and you're not practicing within your scope they're gonna come at you later on and say, well, were you even supposed to be doing that? You know, were you supposed to touch that IV? I mean, you know you're supposed to tell the nurse, right? And that nurse may even say, well, I didn't even tell her to press that. <laughs> you know, so it's like those little things where you have to like, you know, hold yourself accountable, you know, and do things that you know that you're supposed to do. And also like double checking other people's work because we all make mistakes, you know, someone may have charted something improperly or maybe they wrote something down wrong that was like inaccurate. And you know, you just double checking and you know, being extra careful, that can help that person and yourself and ultimate, ultimately the patient. Because at the end of the day, like, 
you know you can't always go by what someone else did because where we work 12 hour shifts so everyone gets tired some people get really lazy um some people don't focus on their work so you don't know the situation so you always want to make sure you're double checking because it can really save your patient at the end of the day i mean i've been in situations where i didn't double check someone else's work and then something happened and i just wanted to kick myself because i know that i'm usually very careful so when i'm not careful it kind of just like kills me on the inside <laughs> you know so you always want to make sure you're double checking and you're just trusting yourself only 100 percent okay so my next piece of advice is to document everything okay document everything over document because at the end of the day if you didn't write it you didn't do it that's just the rule of healthcare because healthcare is not just about caring for the patients documentation is also like a part of healthcare it's probably half of what healthcare is okay because it doesn't matter if you slaved away for your patient it doesn't matter if you almost broke your back pulling them up on the bed or turning them, making sure they're, they're not getting bed sores. It doesn't matter at the end of the day if you don't document that because months from now, people are going to be looking at the chart. If anything happens, the insurance company is going to want to see the chart and they're going to say, well, they didn't write anything. Like they didn't document anything for this patient. They, they didn't document that they turned this patient. Now, I mean, you could be giving the, the most amazing care, award-winning care of your life to this patient, but if you didn't document it, it's gonna make it seem like you didn't do anything for the day. You know, you just came to work and you just really did nothing. That's what it's going to seem like. Because you may not even remember this patient. Most of the time, I don't remember the patients not because I don't care. It's because I see so many of them on a daily basis. Like, I work on a different floor every day. So, if I'm not going back on that same floor, I probably won't remember that patient next week. So the only thing that's going to save me is my documentation. You know, that's the same thing when I worked as an EMT. Like, we had to document everything. It was even, I think it was even harder being an EMT and doing documentation because at the hospital, everything is kind of like preset. You just click buttons. Did I do this? Yes, yes, yes. You know, but as an EMT, you have to write up paragraphs for every single patient, you know, so really if you didn't write something, then that means you didn't do it. So always make sure you document everything, okay? That really is the way of society. It's not just healthcare. Um, documentation can save you in so many ways. So document everything. All right, so in my last video, I talked about self-care and how that's important in healthcare and I really have to reiterate that because I feel like a lot of people don't practice that. You really have to take care of yourself because honestly if you die at your job, you know, just working 50 days in a row, they're going to replace you by next week. You know, they're going to feel bad and I'm, you know, most jobs aren't heartless, you know, some some are, I don't know. But you know, most jobs, you're going to feel bad that you died, but they're going to say, well, I mean, we still need someone to do this job, you know, because it's business, you know. So you have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. You have health insurance. Why aren't you going to get your yearly checkups? It makes no sense. You know, you should go to the dentist at least once or twice a year, getting your yearly checkup from your doctor. You know, maybe if something's forming in your body or something's off, you can catch it early because if you don't have your health, how can you work? You know, you can't provide for your family or work if you don't have your health. So you can't put so much into your job and forget that you are a person you're like the machine behind all this um, so you gotta make sure that you take care of yourself you know um, you gotta make sure that you take days off when you need it you know when you're home you wanna make sure that you're focused on your family don't bring all your drama from work to your family all the time like we all have our days when we're just so irritated with certain things but you don't want you don't want that to be like a habit you don't want to 
you know, bring your, your job home. Your family don't want to hear that all the time. You know, take your daughter to soccer or your son to karate or whatever and just fully be there and just forget about work. Um, so you definitely have to take care of yourself if you want to last in healthcare because it's really not an easy job, okay? It, it takes a toll on you and if you're just concerned with work, working 50 hour, 50 days in a row, 10, 15 days in a row all the time, you know, it's good to make money, but if you don't have your health, you really just, you have nothing. All right, so my very last tip is kind of similar to my tip that I talked about with the whole self-care situation, but um, you always want to make sure that you're going on vacations yearly and you're not waiting until retirement. Like I had a patient that was, I think he was like 72 and he told me that he retired and he's never left the country. He's always wanted to. But the only problem is that he had a bad heart. His heart was functioning at like what, 20, 30%. You know, it was a really low number. And then I'm like, how can you go on this cruise that you always wanted to go on if your heart is not working properly so it's like he worked so hard all his life and now he can't even go on the cruise of his dreams because i mean how are you going to travel when your health is not where you know it's it's healthy for you to travel so don't wait until you retire to take vacations like i went to paris and amsterdam with my friends for what four hundred dollars it was a round trip ticket for $400. Now, I could have been like, oh my gosh, I'm too broke to go overseas, but you can really find good deals. Like, we bought the, these tickets a year in advance, okay? Like, when you get your income tax, buy a two, like, go on a cruise for $200. You know, there's plenty of cruises out there that's even like a hundred and something dollars. So it's really not an excuse. And you know, on cruises, <clears throat> they do provide you with food and everything. Like, you know, take a trip sometimes and enjoy your life. Like, it's really not worth it to go to work every day and not really live. Like, every time I go somewhere new, it opens my eyes and it opens up my perspective. And I'm just so happy that I went to this place. Like, when I went to Europe, it kind of felt too good to be true, but I'm so happy I went. I saw snow for the first time, and I just had the experience of my life. So, don't be afraid to travel and go see new places. It's really, like, a lot of fun. Don't just slave away at, at a job. And that's only the, the thing that you do your whole life is work. You know, it's really not a healthy thing to do because when you die, you're not going to wish that you worked more. You're not going to wish that you picked up that overtime shift, even though you really didn't want to. You're going to wish that you spent more time with your family. You're going to wish you went on vacations. You're going to wish that you went fishing or whatever it is that you like to do. You're going to wish you did more of those things. So make sure that while you're making a living, you're actually living, okay? So I'm going to end it at that. This is my last tip. Um, I hope you guys enjoy these tips and apply them to your patient care tech job or whatever other kind of job that you're doing. This works for nursing too and PA and being a doctor. But I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I will have part two of Tech Talk next week so make sure you stay tuned. And I'll probably even do it, you know, in my, <laughs> in my room just like I did the other two videos. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching my channel and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.